Hello there Pisces, looking for some answers, looking for some confirmation and especially, you know, uh, validation regarding the path that you're about to take, the decision or the choice that you're about to make. And so I see this reading as a little bit more of like a continuation of that. But I do see a lot of changes um, have also taken place. So you might have made some major decisions. And so we're kind of like uh, in a resting phase, okay? Waiting for things to kind of like play out. And so for the two, uh, for, for you guys, um, I can't for the life of me remember the third picture. Okay, so I guess we'll just move on. And then hopefully if it's important, it'll come back. Or as I talk about the cards, it'll come back. So I apologize. So when I saw that first doll, I was thinking, this is definitely you. This is your energy, Pisces, because I feel like you have some secrets that you're keeping, okay? And I, I feel like it's not one of those things where, um, like, juicy gossip or anything like that. I, I, I don't feel that way. I feel like there are things about your life or about you or what you're dealing with or what you're experiencing where you feel like other people might not understand other people might not be able to put themselves in your shoe okay and I, I feel like you know the the concept of like you're going through the motions and if you meet people and you know they're sitting there kind of venting to you about their day, about their kids, about their dogs, about their work, about their job, about their life. And I feel like this, um, I feel like there might be a situation where you're kind of listening, you know, kind of like half listening. And you're thinking like, you know, wow, if you walked a mile in my shoes, the problems that you're saying right now are not really problems. You would know that these aren't really major problems. And so I feel like for many of you, you have been through a lot. You have accumulated a series of life experiences from a very young age. And I feel like you have dealt with, you know, a lot of hardships. So I'm feeling that. And I feel that for many of you, um, you know, a lot of the times when we deal with hardships and adversity, we can either grow from it and uh, you know flourish and thrive or we can kind of let it um, take over us and make us jaded and bitter and I feel like there were times in your life where you 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 took it in, in strides okay you're just like it's okay I can weather this I can get through this I can drudge on I can you know fight another day and things are gonna get better the um, uh, I'll turn around the corner, okay, and then, you know, I'll, I'll look at life in a different way or things will, will get better. It's like that light at the end of the tunnel. And so I feel that you might have gone through a series of these um, life-changing moments or events or, you know, even significant events. And I do feel at a point where you you are starting to feel a little bit jaded. You are starting to feel like, you know, this is not what I anticipated. This is not what I planned. This is not what I had in mind for myself at this age, at this phase in my life, at this station. So I do feel many of you are at a point where you start to feel the heaviness of it, the, the accumulation of it, and it's starting to weigh you down, okay? And I feel like the spiritual advice here from the universe is we plaster on a smile and we keep going, okay? And kind of like that doll, okay? Um, the, the smile is kind of like plastered on. And it puts on a brave face. It puts on a smile. So from the outsider's perspective looking in, they look at you. And, you know, people that look at you, they're not aware of everything that you have dealt with. And so I feel that you feel as if you can't really relate, you can't really um, tell people what you've been going through because they don't understand. Some of you feel like, I need to soldier on. I need to handle this on my own. I need to be strong and I need to just, you know, rough it out. And I do sense that there's a willing listener in your midst. There's somebody like possibly even a, a group of people that are more than willing to, you know, share your experience if you let them. 
there's a support around the corner. There are people that are interested in what you have to say. And so it would be beneficial for you to kind of like give your experiences a, a, a voice, you know, to be able to express what you have been through and to be able to confide in another person and to be able to, you know, just kind of like not have to put on that brave face when you feel like you've had a crappy day, not have to plaster on a smile when you inside you don't feel like smiling, when inside you're just like in turmoil, you're stressed out, you're not happy, it's okay to display these other emotions, even though you might not feel like they are pleasant. I feel like people are trying to get to know the real you. And it's, it's important for you to kind of like allow other people in and to share what it is that's on your mind and to also understand that you have willing friends, you have willing listeners, you have others that are trying to get to know you, that are cr trying to, you know, um, understand what you've been through, okay? Um, I feel like for many of you... Um, and, you know, I felt this for a really long time that I've been doing Piscean readings. Um, you guys love very sincerely, very naively, and very wholeheartedly, okay? You love with your mind, your heart, your body, and your soul. And um, I feel like a lot of the times, you know, you might be aware, people do take advantage of you. And so it is really important for you to be cautious and discerning about who you give your time and your energy and your resources and yourself to, okay? A lot of Piscean people, um, there's this a little bit of like a, a, a savior complex where you might be attracted to people that might be a work in progress or might be a project. So that means you want to be, you want to play the role of the caretaker in the relationship. You want to take care of them. You want to make them better. You want to fix whatever is broken. You want to, you know, heal all of their ills. And just to be fair, you know, for yourself and also just for, for the equality in the relationships. Relationships are supposed to be give and take and equal. And so when you give so much like that and expect nothing in return, it, it sort of like disincentivize the other person to step up, to give in equal measure and to, you know, come to you correct. And so what I feel here is a process where you have been giving a lot of yourself and you feel, you're starting to understand that, you know, the people around you or the people that you have given a lot of yourself to might not be worthy and might not be able to reciprocate and might be taking from you and might be um, selfishly just, you know, like leeching off of you. And so it's really important for us to, once again, you know, demand what it is that we want from other people and when something is not fair it's important for us to give our grievance a voice okay say what you mean and especially demand what it is that you're worth because I feel like you have left a lot of things unsaid you have put on a brave face you have allowed cut I don't want to say that it's a it's a, a process where you're not conscious of it. I feel that many of you are conscious of it. Many of you are very conscious of the fact that you give a lot of yourself. You try to hold back, but you don't know how. And so for this month, starting in this new year, one of the major things that you need to learn is to, you know, Put up your defenses. Take care of yourself. Nurture yourself first. Let other people wait. Okay? Because I can assure you, you're dealing with very impulsive, like emotionally irrational uh, people. People who are very, very impatient. Okay? So what I'm feeling here is you have a bunch of people around you who are very impatient, just like very impulsive, very rash. 
so if they want something, they go to the first person, the most convenient person or the person that's closest to them. They ask for that. And then while the other person is mulling over the decision, they get impatient and then they go to the next person. And so further down the line, they're going to get to you. And so if all of the, those other people have not responded to them and they, they're going down the chain, right, and they get to you, if all those other people they've approached have not responded the way that they want and they're coming to you, what makes you think it would be a good idea for you to respond to them and give them whatever it is that they're asking, right? And then I also feel like you should also understand that they're soliciting other people as well. And so you saying no is not going to hurt them or affect them personally. Does that make sense? So don't worry about them getting mad. Don't worry about them being sad. Don't worry about hurting their feelings. Because I feel like you're just one of the people in a chain or in a string of people. And so if it doesn't bring you um, comfort or if, something, if somebody is asking a lot of you, that would really inconvenience you or would really bother you to give to them, then don't do it. Pull back your energy, okay? So, <clears throat> enough about that. So, going back to the original message here, I feel like, you know, the way that you're showing up here is the High Priestess. I'm seeing a lot of, like, um, female empowerment in this spread. Role reversals, or like at least you know, gender role reversal, um, and then also defying or kind of like overturning gender gender stereotypes or expectations, which is great because I feel like you know we all embody the feminine and the masculine, and we have to exercise you know make decisions and 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 behave in a way that where these two energies flow harmoniously. So every once in a while, we need to step up, operate more from that yang energy, like the more masculine energy, when we are assertive, when we are aggressive, when we go after what we want. And then in interpersonal relationships and in our lives and the way we treat ourselves and the way we treat others, sometimes we have to, you know, step into more of that yin energy where we are nurturing, caring, and soft, okay? So this um, spread indicates to me that for many of you, you're operating more from that masculine energy, stepping up and, and demanding what it is that you need, what it is that you want. And then I also feel somebody else from outside of you, somebody else, another person, is bringing you this drive, this ambition for you to want to um, do more, to demand more. Like they're making you aware of your needs and your wants and your purpose and they're making you crave and desire a lot more from your life okay whatever you're not getting I feel like you're becoming more demanding like I need that I need this and then also um, with this high priestess this is about inner knowledge inner knowing self-awareness and we can't really go out into the world and create things manifest things and even demand things unless we know exactly what we want. So this is the, the burgeoning or the very beginning of the process of self-awareness. Okay? Because for too long, you have lived in this space. Seven of Wands. This is sort of like, I don't want to hog the limelight. I don't want to, um, you know, be the center of attention. I don't deserve it. I don't want to, you know, ups like upset other people. I don't want to make demands for myself because that feels selfish. And in a way, you do feel that, that way. You do feel that by making demands out of other people, I'm making myself more important than other people. And yet, other people have always made demands of you. So, just a little bit food for thought. Because you don't want to be in this position. This is the limelight. This is somebody with a lot of other people looking on. You don't want to say no to people because you don't want to make them angry. You don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. 
you don't want to put them in a rough position. And so I feel like, you know, you cater to, you help. And I feel that you give and give and give. Because you don't want to be in this position where you feel like, who am I to make demands? Well, you are important too. And it's really, this is the month for you to come into that sense of awareness. That, you know, every time I give of myself when I don't want to, I deprive myself of that time, of that resource, of that energy. And energy flows, okay? But it's also very finite. If you give and give and give, you end up very depleted. And so there needs to be an equal exchange here. And I feel like for so long, for such a long time, there hasn't been an equal exchange. And then this also leads me to believe that you're dealing with somebody that might be taking from you, sapping you, um, sapping your energy, your resources. Resource comes out very strongly. And then you are aware enough where you're just like, okay, I'm pulling back. I'm drawing my limits. You know, I'm making my demarcation in the sand, right? And then as soon as you draw back, you set your limits, the other person is just like, why are you selfish? Why are you holding back? Why are you not helping me? And so they're starting to make more demands of you and they're starting to think that you're unreasonable. And, you know, whatever this is, it could be guilt tripping, it could be throwing tantrums, it could be whatever it is. I just feel like it's making you reassess. It's making you reassess whether or not you did the right thing. But I can assure you, you're doing the right thing because you're really drawing back and you're really taking care of yourself because you understand that it's important, okay? And that the other person also needs to be able to handle things on their own. Um, for many of you, I feel like you're really thinking about, you know, your savings, your, your retirement, your um, resources, checking your bank account, uh, talking to like a financial planner, um, talking to somebody about financial planning, okay? So this is the Eight of Pentacles. And I feel like in this card, it's about, you know, creating more of something, working your magic, investing, uh, thinking about long-term yield, thinking about avenues for you to invest your money, to invest your resources, how to make your money work for you. For some of you, this could even be buying property, uh, making sure that your property appreciates and then, you know, wanting to keep it for a certain amount of years before you sell off the property. So I feel like you're doing some massive maneuvering, okay, conjuring things up, uh, manifesting as well as like talking to somebody who might be very savvy when it comes to financial resources like a financial planner or even an investor so that you can make things work for you. I feel like you're facing, um, there There would be a lot of people around you. There's like bickering I'm seeing here. And um, I'm seeing like people might not agree with the choices that you make, okay? People might not agree, but you have your heart set on something. And so you don't need to, you know, um, explain to anybody. You don't need to justify yourself. You don't need to justify the decisions that you're making for yourself. And so you have the gift of insight and intuition. And, you know, um, I, I feel like this is a very good, like, savvy sense when it comes to business. You know how to make money. It's just when people pull from your energy, that's when you find yourself very depleted. And then I also feel like there might be bickering, there might be disagreements, there might be things are happening around you where people are not really agreeing or in accordance with like whatever it is that you're planning. They're trying to talk you into a different avenue. They're trying to talk you into doing something that they want. Whatever it is that they want is not appropriate for you. So stick with your gut instincts and st stay on your course because I feel like other people's um, opinion really shouldn't matter. They, it should not matter. For others of you too, I'm feeling almost like you're thinking about leaving a work environment that might be a little bit um, tenuous, okay? So I feel like there might have been a lot of like, um, it, it's very cutthroat 
Five of Wands, bickering, mindless bickering, not seeing eye to eye, ideological differences. And then we have here the Seven of Wands. This is kind of like a cutthroat environment where people are willing to um, kind of like exploit somebody's weakness, whatever someone says. So that's what I'm sensing. And I feel like for many of you, there could be a situation here where there is communication or another person in your midst that's bringing this change of heart. And I just want to say, I just want to say for those who are watching and if, especially if you're resonating with this, I just feel like this home situation happened first, okay? There's something innately possibly unhappy or, 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 or like dissatisfying in this to begin with. And what, I'm, what I mean by that is if this is something you feel is worth salvaging, is worth um, working at, and, and is worth saving, then you need to take the steps now in order to correct it. Because I feel like the root of the problem is here. It's not this outside person. I feel like it's here. This is where things need to be fixed and mended and repaired. And I also feel like for many of you, um, it might lack excitement. It might gotten. It might have gotten into like a sense of uh, you know like routine. You know, routine. Like something is very routine. Something is no longer longer exciting. Something is no longer passionate. Something is no longer like um, is no longer in that puppy love stage. And so, how do we bring it back? How do we revive it? What can we do in order to? Make it better, right? But either way, regardless of whether or not you're dealing with this, I do feel there is a, a, a new energy. We have here the Knight of Wands. This is like the embodiment of passion and chemistry. And then we have as well the Page of Wands. This is the same type of energy. And so it's going through a maturation stage. Okay, It starts out as the Page and then it uh, escalates into the Knight. And so what I'm feeling is there's somebody in your midst, okay? Regardless of whether or not you're dealing with this. There's somebody in your midst that's bringing you kind of like a whole new world. A whole new set of eyes to look at your life and the life that you've created. Because I feel like it's very different. Like there, there is a little bit of like domesticity here in your life. That is very different from what this this adventure, this excitement, this this sense of like you know, bouncing around, um, being nomadic. So there's domesticity. There is like a nomadic lifestyle, and those two things clash. But in the process of you know getting to know the other person, unearthing their lifestyle, and and looking at the way they live their life. Their life seems very exciting. You're very drawn to it. You're very drawn to this person because they're like your polar opposites. That's what it feels like to me, like um, polar opposites. And then I also feel like there's, um, there's a, a boldness, an impulsiveness, and a rashness coming through from this person because they, they're very... Um, I feel like they're just very courageous. They're very action-oriented. They do things, get things done. They don't sit around and mull over things. And they're very, like, unapologetic. They live their life the way that they want. They don't have to answer to anybody. They don't have to justify any of their decisions the way that you justify your decisions. The way that you have to, you know, get the, the support and the, 